When you have like a near death experience and you get out of it, you go back to like the normal life. You see it in a very different perspective. In the Mika Show, we highlight practical methods to create a meaningful impact in our personal and professional life. Thanks for joining us today and let the show begin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mika Show. Hello, Aki. Hi, Zitka. Hi, dear Joyce. Like we say in France, when somebody is not happy, like, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. So good to see you here on the Mika Show. Mm -hmm. Guys, for those who don't know Aki, you are a songwriter, a song composer, a guitar player, and a member of the rock band Seven Uppercuts. Am I correct? You did your homework. Do you see? Oh. But the thing that I'm the most amazed about you, don't try to leave now. We're only starting. Like, you know. <laughs> the thing that I'm the most amazed about you, it's actually your personal story. And it's something that we are not very specialized on the show. I'm not really into people's stories, but your story really touched me. And that's why we're here today to talk about you. And my personal stuff. And your personal stuff, indeed. And I'm sure everybody is like, oh my God, what is it? What is it? So guys, don't wait. We're not going to wait anymore. Okay, can you tell me what happened to you two years ago? Uh, two years ago, I... Well, two years ago, I beat cancer. Three years ago, I got cancer. Happy anniversary, can we say? Uh, Beating? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, I, in, um, in, what day is it today? Friday 13. Friday 13. Big time. Beautiful, yeah. In, in another two weeks, it will be my... Beating anniversary. Two years anniversary. Wow. Yeah. Probably around two weeks. I That's think. amazing. I mean, it's so precious to sit in here with you today and you seem very healthy. You're not smiling much, but he's a happy man. It's the makeup. It's the makeup. It's the makeup. Yeah, everybody looks amazing on the show. Come on. No, but the real thing is like, I think it's just so amazing because even though you look very mature, but... I you, do yeah, I? Very strong. With no eyebrows. With, with no eyebrows, specifically. But the thing is like, you were 22 when you got cancer. 23. 23, I'm very bad with mathematics. Mm -hmm. We were 23 when you got cancer. And can you tell us like which, how it happened? How did you feel? What was the emotions that were going through your head? How it happened, right? So I think most people with cancer, they don't have an answer to this. Like, I know how the hell it happened, but it happened, you know, like just one day you touch a part in your body and there's like a, a thing that is not supposed to be there and then for a few months, you'd be like, oh, it's normal. Mm. And then after a few months, it's still there. Or maybe it's like growing or like maybe you feel something weird inside your body and you'd be like, oh, this is not normal. What was can it? I, can I say bad words? Bad words? Yeah, I can, can, can. Are you guys going to censor it out? No, no, just be normal. Be yeah, just beep me the hell out. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, oh, it's all right. Yeah, just beep me. Be you. Uh, the, the process of like having cancer is like uh, you, you, you find out something weird about your body, right? And then you, you think it's normal. First, you think it's normal. And then after a few months or maybe a few weeks, you, you don't think it's normal anymore because it's not going anywhere. For example, what was it with you? Uh, I had this big, probably like a thumb-sized like lump in my neck right here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if you, like, if you zoom really mm -hmm. hard, you can see the scar. Mm -hmm. See this thing right here, yeah. right? I thought it was normal for a while. And then, you know, it, 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 it starts growing, it starts growing in size. And um, well, I didn't feel anything weird in my body, to be honest. But, you know, my dad passed away because of cancer. So I, I thought maybe it's like, it could be something like that. So I came to like three different hospitals and like two of them say it was not cancer. And the last one was like, you know, we might want to split your throat and take this out to like, you know, check it thoroughly. And then they did. And then it came back positive so like uh yeah that was cancer which kind of cancer it's a lymphoma it's a kind of like white blood cell cancer and um what it does is pretty much like uh screw up your immune system it's like AIDS but not AIDS mm. <laughs> I'm clean oh no no don't worry <laughs> take that lady I'm clean that's great to know it's clean <laughs> good and how did you how did you feel when the result came? What was your first impression? Take a guess. That was stated, of course. 
like I think everybody with cancer feels the same thing, you know, like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. Oh my God, my family. Oh my God, my work, my friends. I'm gonna have to say bye bye to all of them. Mm. Uh, it's pretty much that. And then, um, you know, a lot of crying, a lot of depression episodes and, you know, new, new metal stuff. And the metal stuff, you got inspired for your music. No, 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 not metal, mental. Mental, oh, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, you know me, Jackson. Uh, how did you went through, through this first stage of like sadness, depression? I never actually did. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the only way to get out of that stage is to beat cancer. But you beat it? Well, yeah, so like a year after that. A year after? Yeah, but it's still kind of haunting sometimes, you know, to remember the feeling like when you get that piece of paper and you hold it in your hand and it says, you have cancer, congratulations. It's kind of haunting sometimes too. What was your mindset when you started chemo and treatment? Well, I, I didn't really think I wanted to like do anything about it, you know. And... um and then my mom, right? That's this my mom. And uh, my dad passed away because of cancer. And sadly, it, chemo was like the only thing he did not do. Mm-hmm. You know, he, f- he came to like um, radio, what you call that? Radiotherapy, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like they, they, they shoot uh, radioactive beams at your mm-hmm. cancer cells, which is okay, good. That's legit. Do that. Um, and then he came to like, spiritual like um stuff too you know and then chemo is the only thing he did not do because it was like really hard to go through physically physically yeah it's like almost impossible to like survive something like that like if you if you have cancer chemo's gonna probably gonna kill you first wow fact yeah because like you can't eat you can't uh sleep you can't recover you can't really do anything it's like it's like a it's a total dis- destruction kind of thing. It's like, it, it kills everything in your body. But, you know, it prioritized cancer cells. How did you went through this time of chemo? Well, I ate a shitload of ramen. Well, porridge? Porridge? Chow? Well, uh, the first few times, um, I had this uh, medicine in the dose and it's like uh, something from my bones because like it... it uh, it migrated to my bones. So I had this bone medicine and it really fucks you up from the inside out. Like it burns your mouth, it leaves you with like ulcers all the way from your lips down to your throat like this. So you can't even swallow water. Water feels like acid. So yeah, I, I had to like just, you know, you know, when people shotgun a beer, there's a skill called open your throat real big. I can do that to porridge. So I shotgun my porridge. And that was, that was how you, you could eat. eat? Yeah, for the first two or three months until, you know, like I, I, I came into the doctor. I'm like, yo, doc, this is not working because like this, this medicine right here is like killing me. Mm. And I don't think I'll, I'll eat enough to have like the energy to like recover from, mm. you know, the chemo. So can you put me on another bone scan to see if it's clear from my bone already? So we can remove that and just keep keep the rest, you know. Mm-hmm. So he did, and it did get out of my bone. Wow. And um, after that, it's just being tired and um, my my tongue hurts just a tiny bit after like every chemo dose. Mm-hmm. How many chemos you you have chemo sessions? Uh, so it's like six doses split into twelve sessions for during one year. During one year, yeah. And after one year, every time they were, I guess they were checking, and after one year they said, okay, you're clear. Mm-hmm. What was your first thought when they told you this? Told me I'm clear? Yes. Yes. Mm. You know, like a very silent yes, because you don't want to jinx it too early. Mm. Mm. But, you know, like, I, I kind of saw it coming too, you know, like, because you're on, you're on chemo and, like, you can feel your body reacting to it. So like there's a bunch of like smaller, smaller like lumps in my neck right here. So I, I sometimes I touch them, I feel them and I feel them like getting smaller and smaller and smaller and then they stop growing and my, my body stop feeling weird, you know. 
and you can kind of tell which uh, which symptoms coming from the chemo and which is coming from the cancer. Actually, cancer doesn't do that much to you until it's like way, way too late. Mm. But like when you have like normal cancer, it doesn't feel bad. It's just there in your body. Mm -hmm. And then the chemo goes in and it fucks you over. That's why most people can't commit to chemo because they'd be like, if I have cancer, cancer doesn't do this to me. And, but, I, but I'm on chemo and it does this to me. So it's like really hard to like convince yourself to go through that kind of feeling too. Wow. The treatment is more painful than the disease itself. I would say 10 times of, at least. And I was but then in the end though, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the later stages of cancer, it's like nothing beats it in terms of pain. I was wondering when we were going through this 12 chemo sessions, like what, what keeps you going on? Like what, which mindset did you have? I don't know, I was just, I was just going into like the hospital, like a dead body, you know, like, like a zombie. I was just like, okay, I have chemo this morning. I go through the same emotions for like 12 months. You know, every morning I wake up, I do the same routine. It's like you guys going to work. Like, it's like my daytime job. Wow. So really, you didn't take it as like a challenge to overcome. Mm. It's just part of your life. That's it. You have to do it to get mm. better. Like yeah. Like mindset. Well, I didn't even think to get better. I was just like, you know, I'm doing this because I have nothing better to do. Wow. And uh, I was wondering, so you said you have this like reaction, like, fuck yes. But what was the after, like going through all this like physical pain, mental pain, depression, once you got cleared, like how was the new Aki, like after coming back to life in some sort? I would say, um, I learned a few things, you know, about mm. uh, valuing life. When you, when you have like a near death experience mm. and you get out of it you go back to like the normal life you see it in a very different perspective i would say i am not so much afraid of death than i used to be but i'm more afraid of death than any of you out here because like you know when people have not had this um experience where you like almost lost your life and then you you, you got you got it back you don't understand how lucky you are mm. to like just be here like we all are right now yeah. is like be here healthy maybe like have a ha having a headache or something like, like that's the worst it gets you know like the worst it, it, it will ever get to like some of us here so like some people would just like never know how, how lucky they are so i learned that so like every day i wake up in, i wake up in a very grateful attitude you know like another morning yes mm. Uh, but also, you know, like it made me very arrogant because now I'm different. Like I'm different. I, I had this experience and I beat cancer when I was like 24, you know, like when you give that kind of achievement to a 24 years old kid like me, I'm 25 now, but still. <laughs> uh, the, I will get arrogant, like really, really arrogant. So I, 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 I came out to other people. I'm like, you don't know shit about life. And I, I came to other people, I'm like, you guys are dumb. I thought I'm some kind of like guru, you know, like the smart guy, the, the wise guy. Well, I, yeah. What, the, what about now? Are you so um, at the beginning of this year, something, no, last year, something special happened to me. Well, my band like officially kind of blew up, you know, like we start going really big when we start making money the game begins you know the game begins and then i opened my own like uh we started our own like uh, record label company ish and then we start to like manage uh younger bands we start to like do business and stuff and uh all that experience was like hard as hell you know being in a big band and uh, managing like a whole like record label, like giving out decisions, making decisions, having ideas and like, mm -hmm. it was like one of the hardest lap I've ever gotten into my face till then. Cause you know, like when you, when you got out of a hospital, like when I got out of that hospital, I was still like a, a jobless guy pretty much, you know, like back then the band was like doing okay, but we're not making enough mm -hmm. a jobless guy and just I just beat cancer, so I thought, oh, that's it. And then, bam, 
start doing business and and how did you use this experience in music and in business i would say um it's really it's really hard to like explain the uh the effect it has on my 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 music well you would see you would not notice a difference in contents and the way i sing the way i write mm -hmm. but the way i approach my music playing like I embrace it better you know and would you have a message for people who are healthy here who don't know about cancer what would you like to tell them the younger version of you before actually I would say it's never that bad. <laughs> it's never that bad. And you will probably, like humans are built very strong, like really, really strong. And you never know what kind of shit can you plow through if you just like close your eyes and start, you know, putting one foot after the other in front of the other one. Yeah. Just like close your eyes and keep doing whatever you're doing, you know. That's the that's like the key to getting through hardship, because mm -hmm. that's how I walk through like chemo and all that, and you know I have that like formula now, so I I do that every time I feel like something is hard, I just close my eyes and just keep walking, mm -hmm. and um, be nicer to your mom, or dad, mm -hmm. and your friends. That's simple. That's that's pretty good. Well, I learned that from my friends actually. You know, like after. After I got out of this uh, thing, I am not the only person who um, learned something new. Because mm -hmm. I see my my very close friends, they almost lost me as well. Yeah. So the lesson they learn is that to to appreciate people around you a lot more before you start to like, you know, realize that they're going to leave or it, before it's too late, to be honest. Like, Don't take things for granted, people. Never take anything for granted, yeah especially your mom or your dad. And I read a lot of interviews of people who like went through either diseases or like survived some like crash accident. And a lot of them were actually grateful for this experience. Oh yeah. Are you grateful? For yes, that? I am like big time. I'm grateful for every miserable stuff I've been through in my life, to be honest. Cause like, you see, if you, if you like yourself as who you are right now, you have to be grateful of everything that happened in the past. Mm. If I had any trouble with myself right now, I would probably blame something that happened in the past, but no, I'm not, you know, I'm a happy guy. Mm -hmm. Not so much this morning in the traffic jam, but I'm a happy guy now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I'm grateful for everything that happened. Even the passing of my dad, you know, some, sometimes pe I say my dad passed away when I was 12 and some people was, were like, I'm sorry. I'm like, you should, you should not be sorry about it. Because, mm. you know, that made me who I am today. That created the relationship I had with my mother for the last 12 years or so. Mm. So it's a good thing. I mean, you know, he passed away already. Mm. So might as well take it for a good thing. Because like, you know, being sad won't bring him back. To be honest, like if, if, if I had the choice, well, it, it's... I would sound like a dick right now, but if I had the choice, I would choose to like go the same path over and over and over again. Because if my dad never passed away, I would never be able to like imagine like where I am right now. You know, like I have a place to depend on to, and I'm a very dependent kid when I was like uh, a kid. I would like cry to get everything I want, you know, like the most spoiled brat ever. Wow. Yeah, I mean growing up in a family like mine, you know, my mom was like a really mellow lady. And my dad was like a guy who didn't really care that much. You know, he's like, he has his own company too. So he was like, um, a little bit older than I am right now. Mm -hmm. When he started it, his own company and it, they were like struggling for like about 10 years. And then when I was like 12, they started to like, you know, get big contracts and stuff, they're, they're, um, they're a construction company. Mm -hmm. So the moment they got big contract, he got wow. the big contract as well with the devils. Mm. Yeah, so what a joke, right? Mm. So I was like, I was like, I would not make the same mistake as my dad. So I was like focusing on my career a lot more. Mm. So that's why I started my company at 25. Mm, congratulations. Mm -hmm. We're not anywhere yet, but I'll take that. 
it's a big step already. And the fact that you're here sharing your story, I think it's something very refreshing somehow because we do not hear a lot of young people that go through this and come back with so much wisdom and at the same time, like simple way of yeah, if I, I think if I was like a little bit older than this, it would be more easy to like channel these emotions into thoughts and then the thoughts into words. So like, you know, people can understand it a little bit better. But like right now, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best to like share with you guys what I feel. But it, it gets kind of hard sometimes, you know, like, yeah, it's like overwhelming. So like... How do you deal with these emotions when they come? Like memories of the treatment, memories of stuff we've been through. I observe them actually. I learn to like observe everything we feel daily. Ernie. Like it, it, it's a really, it's a really cool thing to do. Like learn to like observe yourself and see, uh, what kind of things makes you do what kind of things. And I want to come back on something that you said. You said so now you're happy, you're grateful. Do you have any like daily methods to remind yourself of how lucky you are? What do you do usually? I actively look for a way to entertain myself. But like just me with myself. Mm -hmm. So um, the most important thing, right, it, for me right now is to get a better understanding of me yeah. and myself. Like I don't know me that well and I don't think um, most people know themselves that well. We had this conversation too. So what are you doing to get yourself better besides observing your emotions and coming on the Mika show? <laughs> oh, hell, the Mika show. I, so I, I find a lot of people, right? They, they have like a nine to five job and like, they have kind of like the same life I do. I don't have a nine to five job, but like, you know, it's a job and I, it takes a lot of commitment and stuff. Busy most of the time, stressful. Um, you know, we, we all go through the same daily st stuff, but they suffer really hard from that. And, um, I think it's because they don't have something to like entertain themselves with. So, by themselves. By themselves. Yeah. So no drugs, no alcohol that it doesn't count. Right. Because like drugs and alcohol, you just take them in and it makes you happy. It's not you making yourself happy. Substances don't count. So what does make you happy now? Well, I would say racing, to be honest. Like I take on like dirt bike racing and it's like, it's something that I'm really enthusiastic about. And uh, like e even my friends, they tell me like, you're way too obsessed about uh, like, uh, racing. about this. Yeah, makes yeah. You alive, right? makes, you, makes me feel alive, hell yes. Mm -hmm. Like whenever I fall off that bike, I feel alive as hell. <laughs> And actually, speaking of life, we are coming towards the end of our interview. And I have one last question for you mm -hmm. that I ask all our guests. So, Aki, according to you, what can we do to improve the quality of our life? Improve the quality of your life. Oh, this. <sighs> this one, this one. Ah, oh, my favorite <laughs> question. I had so many answers to this. So this is the reason why I told you not to send me the questions yeah. because I would have too many answers and I would. Uh, wow. Right. So Mika did, did tell me about this question. Oui. And the, uh, the answer I had back then was like, read this book. It's a really, really tiny book uh, by, um, in Vietnamese, we call them Lao Tau, right? And the book is called Đạo Đức Kinh and it's uh, super hard to understand. And uh, it's like the shortest, like it, it, it's a shortcut to being happy and uh, improving your overall quality of life. What's the title again? Đạo Đức Kinh. So the English one is, um, the, I think, The Way of the Virtue. Mm -hmm. And it's written by Lao Tử, Lao Tử Jing or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Lao mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So either do that or just take this one saying and repeat it for everything you do in life. Think less. Think a lot less. Think less, guys. I mean, you know, like people, people overcomplicate things these days. And that's, that's like the, the reason behind every complications we get in life. So think a lot less and remove the fear of losing something. 
you see life is a lot easier to handle. Uh, a lot. Thank you guys. Thank you, Aki. For sharing I don't think I did that well, but you I hope. Great. You did great. Well, yeah. It was very precious to have you here today. And I love the energy, the fact that you were capable of talking about something very dark with a lot of light and humor and energy. I think it's very refreshing and wise. Mm, speaking of refreshing. <laughs> okay, we are, we are done here. Cut, cut, cut. Thank you guys. Comment, like, share, whatever. You know the usual thing. Bye. <laughs>